So what we have here is the legacy driver, 47019.02, updated today, which is interesting, interesting because 6.4 Linux kernel released yesterday. Well, last night. So sometime last night this was released and this driver got updated today. Like, now. You know, now, now, now. Can you say now? Now. Which makes me wonder, did they fix it such that it will compile on recent Linux kernels? we got to check supported products, though. Because they may have dropped something which they do. So Quadro, GB100, GP100 is still there. And the old Quadro K6000 is still there. What about the uh, K620? That's the Quadro K620. So, and that means NVIDIA Titan V is supported also. Everything else on there is just 32-bit gamer junk. Just about everything on there is just 32-bit stuff for gamers. There's only a few that can do 64-bit stuff. So, all right. So this we need to download. Yeah, I agree that you're going to come and get my firstborn child and possibly, you know, do terrible things to me in the middle of the night. Let me go back. So updated today. Snazzy. That means maybe I don't need this patch. Maybe. We'll see. Let's give it a try. Okay. So, first step in this process is I need to go fetch the thing that I just downloaded. And put it someplace I can get it. So 47019 or etc. Let's take a look. Should be on Mount Pluto, me, and video Tuna stuff. All right. There it is, 470 190 So let's copy that from there. That's out on the network. It's an NFS mount. Give me that. Bring it here. I wonder if this breaks CUDA. It's hard to know. Let's make a directory called Linux uh, 640. No RC, just 640. And I believe um, we can extract this NVIDIA driver. I just want to take a look at the top lines of it, because in the top lines is extract only. Okay, so we need that. So, that being the case, shell, extract only, go. Verifying archive okay, and then extraction. Come on, baby, you can do it. Come on, you can do it. There we go. And just for the sake of looking, this machine has um, uh, two different uh, NVIDIA Quadro uh, cards in it. Uh, the, the old K6000, which is a monster of a card. Absolutely beautiful, the K6000. And the GP100, which is actually quite new. And they both do 64-bit math operations beautifully. Uh, one of them is on the top deck of the 
machine, the others on the bottom deck of the machine, they got you know the power connections and cooling and all that stuff's done. Anyway, okay, so that's the extraction done. Now let's try to compile it doing no patching. Although Oh, I'm curious. Just a second. I got to take a look at one of the files that's supposedly a problem. So nv memory map dot c. Actually, I got to do a find on that. Okay, let's get into the extracted directory and do a find. Type file name name name. Okay, so there it is. So I'm curious. If I just take a look at that one file, the NVIDIA memory mapping stuff, we should be using a function call called VM underscore flags set. The old way of doing stuff was this. So line 447 or so, well, let's take a look. I mean, I'll recognize it the moment I see it, you know. And it says, NV underscore VM underscore flags underscore set. That's interesting. That looks correct. It just looks like this function got created. Just a second. Let me take a look at this. What were we using? This is VM flag set. I think it's been patched. It's just it's a little bit different. Right? So it was this. Now it's got an NV in front of it for NVIDIA underscore virtual memory flag set. Uh-huh. That's interesting. So it looks like it's been patched. I don't even mind. Actually, just quit. We're not going to change anything. Let's just compile it and see what happens. Right? And I think I've got a readme file someplace that tells me exactly what to do and how to do. I just have to have the sign file uh, uh, binary from out of my kernel sources. I need my public-private key pair for signing the modules, right? You know, the usual stuff. Nothing, nothing fancy. That right there. So basically, it's the NVIDIA installer dash s, which means silent. Don't, you know, don't tell me anything, you know. I'm um, curious about the log file, though. Just a second. There should be a log file that gets generated and overwritten all the time. Uh, there's my modules. This is from 638, though. This is from 638. If I take a look at 640 right now, let me go to 64.0. Kernel drivers video. I expect to see nothing. Frame buffer development stuff. There's, you know, not much there. Okay, so that's empty. What I need is to run the installer, and we need to give it the public key, which in this case is going to be Linux 64.0. Search kernel key. Blah, 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 blah. Next line, that's the public key, then we got the private key or secret key, which is, by the way, the same thing. Because I put my public private key pair actually all in one file. Do that. Uh, we're going to use a SHA 512 hash algorithm for signing the modules, and we need the script kicker. In the sign file script, I've already gone through the source code on that over and over again. Here you go. That's it. All right. Phasers on stun and good luck. Either works or it don't, right? And if it was updated today, I mean, they updated this driver today. I have high hopes. Come on, baby. Yeah, that's fine. That's all fine. But you know what? It didn't blow up. Oh, do you see what I see? Now if we go take a look at 
the 640 blah, 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 video drivers. There they are. Now there's the NVIDIA module. And we can go cat slash proc modules repping for PO, which means it's outside of the Linux kernel core sources. The NVIDIA drivers are proprietary closed source things. There's a lot of blobs and strange things in there that we'll never be able to get into and you can't anyway and you shouldn't because you can't reverse engineer it. But anyway, there we are. If I say NVIDIA SMI, come on baby, there you go. <coughs> 470, 19902. CUDA, 11.4. I could go to 11.8. I could go 11.8, I think. Actually, no, I am using CUDA 11.8. There's the K6000, there's the GP100. Uh, I am seriously surprised and happy that NVIDIA updated their drivers. They updated their drivers. I'm just going to leave a README file behind for myself to read some day in the future that the NVIDIA drivers work. And i got to do a little test, of course. Not much of a test, just a little test. I will do the following. Yeah, let's just do this. We just drop that in there. It's a readme file for myself for some other day. Okay, out of there. Now, I don't plan on doing much with this machine. I have to go to another machine, build a Linux kernel, and do the exact same thing again. Uh, driver update everything on a, on a totally different machine, which is not going to be very fast. You can hear fans and, and cooling fans and things are running like crazy because there's some machines which are just thrashing their brains out right now. Um, what I'd like to do is a device check. Let me just bring this down here like that. Do a full reset on that. Let's go to Titan. Oh, yeah, I'll just go in as me. I gotta update that. Actually, I'll update that right now. ETC SSH, and I've got a banner here, so what I do is I go proc version, so that string, I chuck it into the SSH, SSH, D, 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 banner, SSH, D, 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 banner, the SSH daemon banner, you know? Starting to sound like Rain Man here. And we take this and shove it up here. Because this is the banner. This is Titan. And I think the rest of this, 640, etc., it's pretty much identical except for the date. Because the GCC compiler I used is mine. I mean, it's the you know, Gen Unix right there from June 14th. That's my GCC uh, build. And I also use the um, bin utils, all built and tested by me. So all that. Notice the preempt dynamic taken out. Yeah, I took out the preempt dynamic. That's right. Now it's just a server. It's not even optional anymore. So that's out. That's out. Done. And then back here on another machine, I go to SSH in, it says now it says Linux version 6.0, etc. Right? Easy. That's a passphrase. I got a little setup script that sets up some environment variables and aliases and things. One of the things it does not do, oh no, no, that's correct. You have certain local bin, etc. What's my GCC? No, that's not going to work. NVIDIA CUDA, when you try to use the NVIDIA NVCC, the NVIDIA CUDA compiler stuff, which in this case is, yeah, it's release 11.8. If you try using that with any GCC compiler, as your intermediate, 
anything past version 10, forget it. It just blows up. Now, that may have been fixed in another release of NVIDIA CUDA stuff, but for the moment, I think it's still broken, if you ask me. Um, let me take a look at USR bin. I think I have GCC-10. I do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say CC equals... I'm going to set an environment variable here. Just that. Done. And then the same deal, except it's going to be G++, right? So same thing. Do that. No such file or directory. Oh, that's a minus sign there. Equals. I missed the key. Oopsie. All right, done. And the rest of that, I think... Oh. Yeah, it's finding that first, and that's okay. Let me go into here, um, my own code stuff. Get whole origin BW blast wave. That's me. Okay, so that's NVIDIA CUDA stuff there. I was messing around with it. Uh, making changes and stuff, but I do have a device info bit of code right here and Looking at it all it does is probe through the devices. That's all it does uh, Most of this came off the NVIDIA website, and then I just hacked it and hacked it and hacked it and made changes and You know I made a whole pile of changes in there put in comments. I changed the format of the output and stuff I mean basically all I'm doing is I'm making a call to get the uh, device properties which is right there. CUDA get device properties right there and shove it into the device properties struck and that there CUDA device properties loads of fun! Loads of fun! This particular CUDA device, uh, look at this, it returns back a structure. This structure all kinds of stuff in there but you want to know what's not there? If you look really closely and go scanning through it, you might want to ask, well, how many CUDA cores are in this device? And it's not there. You can get your how much memory you've got, total global memory in a given device. So if you've got, say, a GV100, whoa, you're going to have a huge pile of memory. If you've got a GP100, it's going to be your 12 gig or 16 gig of, of memory in that device. The old k 6000 has got 8 gig of memory inside it, right? Um, lots of things like warp size. Huh? Welcome to Star Trek, boys and girls, and NVIDIA. You know, your clock rate, all kinds of total constant memory, major minor device number stuff, all kinds of stuff. You've got your multiprocessor count, and by this, NVIDIA means how many streaming multiprocessors are inside that device. Then you have to ask other questions in order to figure out well, how many CUDA cores do I have? How many threads of execution can I throw out at, you know, a CUDA device? It's hard to know in advance unless you have a, a couple calculations. Worse, even worse, is hard-coded stuff just to make your life, like, to make your life complete. There is a helper CUDA function, which I keep modifying. I get in there and I keep making changes, but... This is hilarious. At least I think it is. <sighs> All right. All kinds of error number stuff. Like, this is just basic functions that give you error states. And there's a lot of possible errors that can happen with CUDA. And you have to check for, did it work? Lots and lots of CUDA get error numbers. I mean, it's just ridiculous. However, Somewhere in here is, hold on, we'll get there. It's hard coded in. Cuda errors. There it is. There it is, and I changed the comment format to just the old C style, beginning of GPU architecture definitions. Convert streaming multiprocessor version 2 
streaming multiprocessor ver I, whatever to cores instead of like the word to t o they could have put an underscore in here why not underscore convert you know underscore sm underscore to cores and they use the major minor device number data which is returned from the CUDA device property structure which is right down here it says int major and minor device number data hard coded in is this Kepler, Maxwell, Pascal, Volta where's Ampere? where's the newer stuff? it isn't there I don't know where the data is for that stuff I haven't seen an update to this particular function, but I'm going to go digging into it and find it. Anyway, I, I made some changes here. Um, to make a long story short, to figure out how many so-called CUDA cores you know, you've got, you have to make a call to this function to get a number back, and then you use that to multiply by some other stuff, plus some magic face east if it's a Tuesday, and your mother's birthday and the winds from the west and it's a full moon and you've got a black cat then you may know how many cores of execution you've got and how many threads you can throw of kernel executable code into your CUDA quadro device good luck good luck right anyway let me just compile this up I've got a script kicker here but I'm not going to run that script kicker. Instead, what I'm going to do is say, where is my NVCC? There it is. I'm going to set an environment variable because it makes it life easy. So I'll just do this. NVIDIA CUDA compiler. Allow. Export. NVCC. Yeah. Get that out of the way. I've already got this set. I think I should be okay here. I don't know where the profiler is, though. A bit of the profilers in the same place. NVIDIA profiler, which tends to fail. This fails if you're using the K6000 Kepler Quadro GPU. It fails. It seg faults. It, it issues some weird memory error. But I've tested it. I've tested code against the K6000. Code works. The profiler fails. Good luck. Again, good luck. Okay? Let's run it. NVCC. I'm going to run that. Dash CC bin is going to be my dollar C. It's X. And here I'm going to say we're going to need to target, I think, a few different executable possibilities. Oh, I need the compute level. That's another fun thing. CUDA compute, CUDA device compute level. Because of course, every single bloody device compute capability, the internal uh, code representation that is created by the NVIDIA CUDA, CUDA, CUDA compiler, the code does not execute across multiple CUDA devices because they're all different. Isn't that wonderful? So let's go to uh, NVIDIA Quadro, NVIDIA RTX device. Uh, data center? Nah, we'll just go here. And down here, if I go scrolling down someplace, I will find, uh, well, there's the old K620. That's a 5.0. What's that mean? It's something related to something called the PTX code level that's used inside the Quadro device in order to make it run. Huh. And if you've got the wrong compute level, it's not going to work. Somewhere up here is the old K6000, 3.5. That's old. So 3.5, and I also need a GP100, which is a Pascal device. And the GP100 is where? Where are you? I know you're here someplace. It's a much more modern device. Quadro, RTX this, RTX that. By the way, most of these devices cannot do... There it is. GP100 is a 6. So, 3.5 and 6.0. Okay. And then you got the much more modern stuff up here. By the way, some of that stuff completely fails. <coughs> it's terrible. It fails. 
because NVIDIA disables the 64-bit compute capability in their cards all the time. They just disable it. They go like, what? You want to do math and use 64-bit math math operations? Pay more. Pay $10,000. Pay me, is what they literally say. Oh, I forgot my include. Include-M64. I can put that in there now. And I'm not going to, yeah, blah, 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 blah. There we go. Go, baby, go. That works. Well, it did something. It did something. I don't know what it did. Let's do this. Again, I'm going to do all of this. I'm putting the dash M64 here. I think it's... Oh, that's... I'm duplicating myself. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I put it in twice. Harmless. I think what I'll do is I'll break this line here. Do this. That's my CUDA compute capability for the Quadro K6000. This is for the GP100. And if you don't do this, then the code won't run on one of the devices or maybe both of the devices. Who knows? Dev info from dev info. Object L gomp. Gomp, I think. No, I don't need that. Let's go. Whatever. Oh! Cannot find the NVIDIA performance package static. Really? Didn't think I needed it. Oh, there it is. Yeah, all right, I forgot something. Oh, I forgot a couple things. Oopsie, that's my mistake. And that's on the... Yeah, okay, a couple things have been forgotten by me. My fault. Let me go back here. No, that looks correct. That looks correct. No, that was fine. So, where's my... Uh, ding, 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 ding. Let's try CUDA Home, which I think may solve this problem. Set that environment variable. And then let's try to redo the link stage. Don't need any of that. Back up, back up, back up, back up. One moment, please. I just want to look at my own script. I mean, I wrote it. Doesn't mean I necessarily follow it. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. Dev info. In fact, profiler. In the profile. Profile. Dev info. Go. Done. So a whole pile of calls. 716 microseconds for this. 187 microseconds. Two microseconds. I mean, everything is so fast. But what's most important is... I get to find out that my NVIDIA Performance Package version is uh, it's 11.8. I do have the NVIDIA Performance Primitives. NVIDIA Performance Primitives or NVIDIA Performance Package. Stuff that I have used, it's worthwhile looking into because there's all kinds of like Fourier transform and image processing functions and stuff in there. Guess what? They're all 32-bit. They're all 32-bit. Like circa 1988, 1989, 32-bit computing is what you get mostly from NVIDIA. If you want 64-bit stuff, I'm sure they've got that hidden and tucked away someplace, but if you got $50,000 to spend, they'll go, oh, you want those libraries? Oh, yeah, sure. And they got Kublas, right? Anyway, CUDA driver, 11.4, runtime 11.8. So this card is the GP100, there's your memory, all kinds of stuff, cores per multiprocessor, 64 of them, total 3,584. So 3,584 total CUDA cores. That number is based on that weird function call that you have to do into a helper underscore CUDA header file Nothing's obvious. What's important to me is, is that the old Quadro K6000 is right there. Oh, capability, 3.5. This better be 6.0 up here. Yeah, 6.0. And that matches what we find on the website. 3.5. Looks good. 12 gig of memory. Blah, 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 blah. And eventually, I think it says total CUDA cores is 2,880. 
both of these cards are fully 64-bit capable. They are considerably faster than just about everything else that NVIDIA sells, really. Or you can get a GB100, or you can get an NVIDIA Titan V, and I think those are anywhere from $3,000 to $5,000 to $10,000 for those cards. Personally, I have spent five and a half thousand dollars on these two cards, roughly, just for fun. Anyway, it works. The CUDA compiler is working, the driver is working, um, but the only other thing I can possibly do is maybe do a simple vector add 64-bit test just to see, you know, and this is trivial stuff, really trivial. I wonder if this will just work. I'm curious. Let me take a look. I wrote the script. Let me take a look. So we do 32-bit floating point and 64-bit. Yeah, so this is CUDA 11.8. There's the CUDA home. Yeah. Except this is compiling for every card up to 7.5. So. Over here, I can go up to T1000 stuff, RTX 5000. I didn't put in anything for anything higher than 7.5 because why bother? I mean, why bother? Yeah. Anyway, I think this script should just work. And what it does is it just fires off a big pile of numbers to add together. And I think I've got that in an include file someplace. Include file dat.h. Yeah, that thing. I don't know what we got in there. I don't think it's doing much. Yeah, yeah. On an itty bitty little Quadro K620, which is a funny little card. It's a funny little card, but it, it works. It only has two gig of memory. With 5% of overhead, we can slam in, what is that? 83 million elements of 64 bit. So, one has to simply do the math and say, I've only got two gig, take off 5%, a little bit overhead, whatever that is, divide by three, and then divide that by eight, which is 64-bit data elements. And you gotta get a number somewhere in that vicinity. If you've got a really big card, you can get away with things like, if you've got 12 gig of memory, that should fit. If you have a, you know, really big card. I think a GV100, you can do a billion of these. I don't know. This, yeah, let's see what happens. I'm just going to run it. Just run it. So now it's compiling the Vector Edition F32-bit. Code will run in five seconds or stop me. No, no, no. Go, go, go. Profiler. Did not seg fault. 1.8 milliseconds to do the addition. It did not seg fault. Now this is going to be interesting. And it didn't seg fault. Maybe that's been fixed. Could be a driver thing. I am mystified, mortified. I am anesthetized by these results. Uh, we selected the GP100. So I was going to force the K6000 just to see what would happen. But instead, I went with the GP100 there. I've got some code logic in there that selects, you know, whatever the big card is. Up here, I think, same thing. Mm. Yeah, the max memory units, Quadro GP100. Okay. Anyway, it's Linux 6.4.0 released yesterday using an NVIDIA driver released today. All built and compiled and running. It looks like it's working. I'm going to have to do some more testing. You know, it's hard to know for sure. It really is hard to know for sure. I don't know. Ah, anyway, that's enough of that. NVIDIA, I'm going to go to a different machine with a different NVIDIA Quadro card, 
build a Linux kernel, do the driver update, and then check CUDA to compile stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to do all that. And anyway, seems to work. <laughs>